Well, hello, everybody. I'm the Reverend Mark Britton. I'm the pastor here at Zion United Methodist Church, and I want to welcome you all uh, to this wonderful event. Um, I think baccalaureate is a very important thing for our students, and, and uh, I thank them for coming today and sharing some of their time with them and what's going to be an exciting week. And so um, we're just glad, me and Pastor Thomas are just so glad that uh, we get to share part of our time with you on your big week. So thank you all for coming. Hey, join me if I follow along with the bullets in there and call the worship. Many voices are speaking to us today in the movie theaters, on the concert stages, on the television. Today, Lord, we choose to listen to your voice, to respond to your desires, to follow your highest path for us. Many voices are speaking to us today in our homes, in our friendships, and in our community. Today, Lord, we choose to listen to your voice, to respond to your desires, to follow your highest path for us. Many voices are speaking to us today through celebrities, commercials, and through media. Today, Lord, we choose to listen to your voice, to respond to your desires, to follow your highest path for us. As many voices ring in our ears, we say that we choose to listen for your voice, to do what pleases you, and to stay true to the path you have lovingly set before us. Strengthen each of us to choose the high road, to live up to the greatness you placed within us, and to honor you in all our ways. Lord, we listen for your voice. Amen. God of truth and knowledge. By your wisdom, we are taught the way and the truth. Bless these young men and women as they now finish this course of study. We thank you for those who taught them and worked beside them, and all who supported them along the way. Walk with these graduates as they leave and move forward in life. Take away their anxiety and confusion of purpose. Strengthen their many talents and skills. Instill in them a confidence in the future you plan, where energies may be gathered up and used for the good of all people. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, our first hymn is going to be number 589, Here I Am, Lord. Please rise. sky. I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in deepest sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. 
I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone. Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night I will go Lord if you lead me I will hold your people in my heart please be seated All right, I know it's Sunday and you guys got other things to do, so I'll keep it short for you. I have a passage that I would like to read. It's Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes and fear the Lord and turn away from evil. God has our back no matter what we do in life. We don't have the all-knowing knowledge like He does. He knows what plans He has for all of us and, it and all it takes for His plan to work is for us to believe in what He knows. And what are we going to do if it comes our way is stand firm and believe in Him. As stated in Proverbs 3, 6, in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. He does not harm us. He always, he allows bad things to happen to us, but he does not harm us. Did he create us? Yes. Did he create COVID? No. Humanity created COVID, but he allows bad things like this to happen to show us that we still need him. Through COVID, he took many things from us, whether it be a normal senior year like most people would have liked. But after he takes these things from us, we have two things, two options. 
be mad about what happened and turn away from him. And when this happens, we do worldly things like partying, drinking, sexual activities. Or we can turn to God and look for his guidance and trust him that he will guide us to his glory land. Trusting him doesn't always feel good or make us happy all the time. And you know you're trusting God when you can feel it in your heart. It's that gut feeling, no matter what you're doing, what's telling you what to do and when to do it. It's that part of your soul telling you to do the right thing, even when no one else is watching. Thank you. Will you please join me in prayer? Dear Lord, I thank you for all my friends and classmates here. I thank you for all the parents, and I thank you that they took their time out of their day to come and listen. I ask that you guide us in our future, Lord, and that your plans be done no matter what. In your name I pray. Amen. Scripture reading from Romans chapter 13, 12b through 14. So, let us play, put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently. As in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Now this is a, a baccalaureate prayer that uh, I've used a number of times. I cannot take uh, credit for authoring it. It's by another pastor by the name of Clint Zemer. And uh, I just enjoyed uh, what he had written so much that, uh, that I use it uh, whenever I can during baccalaureate. So let us go before the Lord in an attitude of prayer. Almighty God, creator of life and source of truth, at this hour, we ask again your blessing upon these students, their school, and all who are graduating. I, along with the parents gathered here, thank you, Lord, for guiding these, your children, to this point. Thank you for answering the many prayers offered up for these students over the years. And now, as they stand upon this threshold, we ask yet again for your hand to be upon their destinies. As wise parents, we realize that we can only take our children so far. And then there comes a point in which we must let them go. Help us to be grounded in the understanding that we can and should release them into your care. Remind us once again, Lord, that you love these children more and better than we ever will. For these who are being released from these great halls of education, we pray for life. Guide them and direct them into the life that you have planned for them. Guard their faith. Give them the courage to live life to the fullest and the wisdom to never compromise with evil and in so doing, cheat themselves of your best for them. For those who are graduating, Father, we pray for love. God, you have gifted these graduates with so much love to give. Help them to find others who will love them and people with whom they may share their love. Help them to remember, no matter what happens, that you have loved them first and gave of yourself that they may live eternally in loving relationship with you. For these, your children, Father, we pray for happiness. They have so many dreams, plans, ambitions, and hopes. The whole world lies before them. Help them continue to learn and grow, to find work and realize their place in this world. 
be their guide and a light for their path through this sometimes dark and dreary world. Cover them when they stumble and pick them up should they fall. May they know love and mercy in your constant care. Finally, for you seniors from Numbers chapter 6, Aaron the priest of Israel's blessing to the people of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. From Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 34. Hear these words of Jesus. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So I just want to say good afternoon to all the graduates of Richland 44 class of 2021. And I want you to know that it is a great pleasure and honor for me to be able to address you uh, today as you prepare yourselves to, to graduate from high school in just one more week. Now this has been a moment for which you've been waiting for quite some time. And like all things, the time has finally come. And soon you'll be heading out into the world where some of you may enter into the workforce, some will go to college or maybe a technical school. But for all of you, your high school days will be a thing of the past and everything will change. You know, I still remember the excitement of my high school graduation. I remember the party. All my family members came to congratulate me on what was up to that point, the most important day of my life. And I really did have a wonderful time that day, and so I hope all of you do as well. 
The thing I want to talk to you about uh, today is that as you prepare yourselves to eventually leave home and begin your new lives, I would like all of you to remember something very important. You do not go alone. When you leave home, you take the hopes and dreams of your families and of your communities with you. This is because all of us want to see you become successful and responsible citizens. And we want you to take a set of values with you, loving other people and caring for their needs. And above all else, we want you to remember to walk towards the light and not towards the darkness. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, now that you won't have your families, your teachers, or your pastors with you, you are going to be faced with an entirely new set of challenges. You're going to meet people who don't have the same values that you have. And what can happen is that you try to meet these new challenges alone. Now, some of these folks are going to try to convince you that life after graduation is nothing more than one big party. Some of them are going to try to get you to broaden your horizons by experimenting with drugs, drinking to excess, and a whole host of other things that your family might disapprove of. But you are not alone. You are never really alone. God also goes with you every step of the way. Now, I was watching a comedy the other night. Uh, it was called Hot Rod. Have any of you ever watched that movie? Yeah? Well, there's a scene that I... I, I liked quite a few scenes in that movie, but there's one that I, I really loved in that movie. It was when Rod was making a world record attempt to jump more buses on a motorcycle than anyone else. And as he leaves the ramp, the place where he is most comfortable, and heads up into the air, the place where he has never been before, he looks over at his friends, and he gives them a big thumbs up. And then we are shown that Rod is no longer on his motorcycle. He's just flying through the air, free and unencumbered by anything else. But then he has to face reality that what goes up must come down. And he falls to the other ramp and he twists and turns and he bounces all the way down until he skids to a stop right next to an ambulance. And that's when one of his friends runs to his side and yells out to him, Rod, don't go towards the light. Stay away from the light. But Rod doesn't listen. And soon he is in a place of light that is tranquil and peaceful. He's wearing a white jumpsuit and everything is at peace. Until the taco and the grilled cheese sandwich show up and have a fight. And then he wakes up. You see, you're going to meet people that want to keep you from heading towards the light. And who are going to try to turn you towards the darkness. And I want to tell you today not to listen to them. Because in actuality, they could care less about you. And about the hopes and dreams that you and your families have for you. Because they are the ones who are lost. And they just want someone else to be lost with them. It's sort of like when you're at home at night... And the power goes out, and you're left alone in total darkness. What do you do? Well, you might get up and try to look for a flashlight, and as you walk, you, you take little baby steps, and you put your hands out in front of you, and you search for what you know should be there, but you just can't see. And most times, you run into the furniture that you forgot was there, you might bruise your shin, or you trip, or you walk into the wall or a door. See, it's very hard to get to the place that you want to be at when you are walking in the dark. 
But you see, when you walk towards the light, the shadows do fall behind you. And you leave the darkness behind. That's my wish for every one of you. That as you head out on your own, you go with the knowledge that God goes with you. And don't try to make it on your own because that just becomes sinful pride, keeping you from having the relationship that God wants to have with each one of you on a very personal level. Allow God to go with you. Allow Him to have an active role in your life because whether you know it or not, God has a plan for each one of you. He knows where He wants you to go. But the thing about God is He also allows you to make the choice whether you will follow that plan or not because He doesn't force it on you. That's the kind of love that God has for you. And I hope that you won't turn away from Him that you won't turn away from his light. Now in the scripture readings for this evening, we are all given a warning of sorts. One of the mistakes we often make is that when we do go out on our own, our main focus is on storing up those things that are of the world, rather than the ones that are from God. We get it into our minds that the only thing that's going to make us happy is making as much money as we can. And so, for some people, that becomes their entire focus, making more and more money. Some people get so encased in this that they sacrifice other things in order to follow this dream into its darkest corners. They give up time with their families and their children. They work so hard that their health starts to deteriorate, and some of them turn to alcohol and drugs as a, as a coping mechanism to get them through each day. But in Matthew's Gospel, he shows Jesus talking to the people. And he tells them, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. And then he adds the most important part when he says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see, if you go out into the world looking for nothing more than what you can get for yourselves, you go out into the world in a very selfish way indeed. What Jesus is telling us is that we should live it, well, is not that we should live in a constant state of poverty, but that we're supposed to be satisfied with, with what God gives us and then use what God gives us to the best of our ability. He wants us to remember to do two things. Love God and love our neighbors. That is the key to a successful life. And I would say that is one of the keys to being happy. Now, some young people go away from home and forget every rule their parents ever gave them. They try to serve God and the world at the same time. And I was no different. When I went to college, I sang in a Christian singing group called Heaven Sent. We would give four to five concerts almost every single week all around the state of Iowa. And I was good at saying all of the right things to show everyone that I was a Christian. But you see, I was trying to serve two masters at that time in my life. Because when it was dollar pitcher night at the bar, I was right there making a fool of myself, doing things that were anything but Christian. I said that I was a Christian, but in reality, I really wasn't. Jesus warns us about this as well when he says, no one can serve two masters. We cannot serve God and the desires of this world at the same time. 
And another key in the words of Jesus is not to worry about where the future is going to lead you because when you worry too much, you end up missing some wonderful opportunities. Have faith that God is going to provide you with the things you need. Now, of course, I'm not saying that you should just go and sit around and be lazy because you have to do your part as well. But I am saying don't allow the pressures of the, this world overtake you and cause you to be stress-filled. Because stress takes away your joy. It robs you of your happiness. Give those stress-filled situations to God and let Him handle them for you, remembering that you are not alone. Finally, I want to echo the words of Paul as he writes to the church in Rome when he says, Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling, which is a fancy word for partying, and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. So what Paul is, is advising us then is to walk towards the light that comes from Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. Follow him and not the darkness that is in the world. Keep your eyes and your focus on Jesus because he is never going to lead you astray. But he will lead you through this world and towards what should be the end goal for every one of us. The glory of our heavenly home. So again, I say congratulations on this tremendous accomplishment. And I wish you the best of luck in all of your future plans. And know that as you leave the safety of these communities, these churches, and your school, you go with the hopes and the dreams of all of us. And you go with all of our love and the love of God. And as you do, I ask God to bless you all in everything that you do throughout your lives. Amen. At this time, we're going to uh, name and bless the graduates. Please come forward, graduates. Mm -hmm. you come. Receive this blessing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go with God. Sawyer Brown? Did I say your name? No. <laughs> Kirsten Bame, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lord Jesus, and the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you and encourage you in life. Peace. Riley Hendrickson. <clears throat> Receive this blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go and walk with God. Mm -hmm. Gwen Hopping? Nope. Oh, Samantha. Samantha. <laughs> Samantha Henderson. Lord bless you. May the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit go and live for him. Okay. Gwen Hopping. Sorry. It's okay. Receive this blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go and walk with God. Mackenzie Johnson. Mackenzie, the Lord bless you. And in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, go and live in the circle. Gunnar Miller.
receive this blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go and walk with God. Nate Muniz. Hey, the Lord bless you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go on with you. Chase Schmidt. Receive this blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go and walk with God. Caden Schroeder. Caden, I want to bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and with him. Ellie Storbachen. Receive this blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go and walk with God. Thomas Sander. Thomas Sander, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to follow Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and stand on the Holy Spirit. Our closing hymn for today is going to be Because He Lives, number 358. And as you're uh, opening up your uh, hymnals to that, I want to let you know that we do have refreshments outside. It's, uh, uh, how, do you, how do you say it? Take and, take and go. Yeah, cupcakes and water. So, <laughs> I don't know. I just work here. <laughs> Our hymn is number 358. Uh, because he lives, please rise. sent his son they called him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he lived and died to buy my pardon an empty My Savior lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know. And life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he I can face tomorrow because he lives. 
All fear is gone because I know He holds the future and life is worth the living just because He lives. And then one day I'll cross the river I'll fight life's final war with pain And then as death gives way to of glory and I'll know he reigns because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know He holds the future And life is worth the living Just because He lives Please bow your heads and receive today's benediction. Almighty and ever-living God, as we leave this place, help us to always remember that where we go, you are. Grant us your strength to move into the future unafraid and help us to live our lives in ways that please you. Now go from this place of love and peace and serve God in all that you do. Amen.